present a cataract surgery of a 25 year old female patient with a blunt globe trauma. I stained the nucleus with uh, vision blue. Next step is injection of viscoelastics. Then the main incision. You see a remaining air bubble at 6 o'clock. I'm now trying to perform a to pinch a hole inside the interior capsule with a sister term, but I do not succeed because the um, interior capsule is very very thick. I therefore continue with the insertion of iris hooks to dilate the pupil. I'm using a 27 gauge grey cannula for the incision, then insertion of the iris hook. I'm just showing one small trick here. You see I do not succeed to place the hook under the iris. because there's no space between iris and nucleus and the trick is to inject viscoelastics the trick is to inject viscoelastics behind the iris so that you can place the hook in this gap very simple now hold the stopper with a surgical forceps and the hook on its own with a anatomical uh, forceps and then continue with the two other iris retractors. I'm trying again to open the interior capsule with the sister tome and I did not succeed. The interior capsule is very very thick the next step is um, the capsorexis forceps. I succeed partially and I'm able to remove a, an interior part of the interior capsule. But the underlying part of the interior capsule is not removable with the um, capsorexis forceps. Now I'm trying to um, open the interior capsule with a vitreous cutter. I'm using a very low cutting rate, but uh, I do not succeed. I therefore try to use an intervitreal knife, a so-called CRVO knife, and I'm trying to pinch the interior capsule to open it, but uh, without success. So I'm trying now to use an intervitreal scissors, 23 gauge intervitreal scissors from Dork and trying again to open the entire capsule but again without success. The final attempt is the usage of two 27 gauge cannulas which I insert from both sides of the cornea.
and uh, now I succeed to open the interior capsule and create a hole inside the interior capsule. Now I can uh, take the individual scissors and create a larger opening in the interior capsule and then using the capsorexis forceps and the individual scissors I can create a capsorexis You see that this very thick membrane really needs an intervitreal scissors. Um, this is an scissors for intervitreal surgery, but there are also two. There are also several scissors available um, for tear segment, which you can use through a paracentesis. It's important that um, that you must be a bit flexible with the scissors. I'm using this from different locations in order to perform a round circular rexus. So I'm continuing now from five o'clock to. Um, Continue the rexus. Do not use force uh, when performing the rexus. You will only destroy the capsule which you need for implantation of the IOL. So again a new side incision. In order to um, enlarge the rexus And again, I need um, the scissors to continue the rexus because the anterior capsule is too thick. The next step is uh, irrigation aspiration. This is the eye of a young patient, so the nucleus is very soft and can be simply removed with irrigation aspiration.
you can maybe see now that the that there's no red reflex of the eye and the vision behind the lens capsule is very poor and the simple reason is a total original attachment but this is a, a another story the next step is the implantation of a capsule tension ring to stabilize the uh, lens capsule which has some cellular lysis this is a preloaded capsule tension ring very easy to use just be secure that the beginning and the end lie inside the lens capsule and the final step is the implantation of an one piece IOL you can see that this push-pull instrument is very useful for manipulation of the IOL because you can also rotate the haptic with the push-pull Thank you very much.